How is life up in Newcastle? Yeah, really good, thanks. Uh, really enjoying it. Um, you know, the city and the club, uh, all the players and staff, all the fans you know, have welcomed me you know, really well. So, yeah, I couldn't have asked for a, for a better start. And if you didn't realise what a kind of unique, bizarre, sometimes bonkers set of fans, you probably did two weeks ago, didn't you? Talk us yeah. through the day that you were trending number one yeah. in the country, <laughs> number 10 in the world. Yeah. When did you first realise what was going on? Um, just when we landed in Brighton, to be honest. Um, so, so we got a flight down there and uh, when we took off, uh, didn't know anything. And then when we landed, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was worldwide, like you say. So it was a, a strange scenario to, to kind of land to. Kind of had to you know, blink a couple of times, pinch myself. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, a, a funny scenario for you know, a Friday afternoon, if you like. Um, but yeah, like you say, the, something that fan base kind of created. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, I'm glad it was a clean sheet on the Saturday. Talk us through that kind of moment you land, you know, your phone goes back on. How many yeah. WhatsApp messages did you have? Yeah. How many missed calls did you have? Were your family saying, what on earth have you done? Are you in, have you got yourself yeah. in a bit of trouble? Yeah, there's a few text messages just saying what's going on. So that's always <laughs> a bit of a worry in there, uh, what's happening. Um, but yeah, my phone just didn't stop kind of vibrating or notifications didn't really stop. Um, it was kind of just constant. Uh, I don't know how many it was, but there's a lot. Um, so yeah, it's something that you know not used to really. I suppose I don't think many people are. So it was a, a funny situation. Um, but yeah, like so he found out the reason kind of why, and obviously sees some of the some of the images that were, were around it um, that were, were a good laugh. So yeah, it was a, it was a good afternoon, and obviously the boys like to you know share me what they've seen and take take the uh, Mickey as much as possible. I was going to so. say, did you get a little bit yeah, of ribbing? <laughs> I got a little bit. Every new image that came up, I, I got shown. So that it was a it was a good laugh. Uh, who gave you the hardest time? <laughs> <laughs> I think they spread it out ever because it was you know it was like I say it's worldwide. It was it was every time I walked around the corner there was someone else. <laughs> yeah. So no, it was good. Um, if it was one of the other lads, I'd be doing the same. Of course so. you would. And uh, you and Nick Pope, the UFO expert, he replied, yeah. now best buddies on, uh, on Instagram. Yeah. I think um, we kind of had a conflict a few years ago when kind of some, something happened and I don't know if he was getting hounded by opposition fans and had to tell people that it wasn't me. So uh, we've had a... Yeah, we've had, well, our paths have crossed before. <laughs> Isn't that funny? One day you might get to meet him. You never uh, know. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. And if I ever need some more uh, information on UFOs and aliens, at least no, I've, got, I've got a contact. <laughs> you know where to go. Uh, I've got a contact. And I guess the big question is, was it tomato or gherkin? Which is what yeah. started all of this. <laughs> that was the start, wasn't it? No, neither. So I think I was the answer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and despite letting in three against City, you still pulled off some incredible saves. As a group, first of all, and yourself personally, to to get a point having Yeah, three is probably quite a low number for me, I think, against them boys. Yeah. <laughs> um, so no. But it might have been ten on a different day. Yeah, it was, um, they're always, you know, they're, they're a great team, you know, they're one of the best in the world, maybe the best in the world. So as a goalkeeper, you, you know, you go to bed the night before and you know you gotta be busy the next day and that's why that's why you train hard all week and you, you work hard in your in your preseason is to, you know, be ready for moments in, in games like that. Um, so yeah, happy to you know keep a couple out. <laughs> well, Pep described you afterwards as incredible. He said England has an incredible goalkeeper there, and when you hear that from Pep Guardiola, you must have slept well the night after. <laughs> I think you're doing something right. Um, obviously, yeah, he's a great manager and he's put together that team. So yeah, to get in the way and to stop them winning is a yeah, it's a good feeling. You started so well, and then you're. You have to be looking at England and a World Cup in, in a few months' time, don't you? Yeah, I think obviously on the first point, you know, relegations are a really difficult thing to go through. Obviously, um, people in the dressing room here have been through it, manager, staff, um, and, and knows what it, know what it's like. Also, for myself, I've been through it again at, um, at Charlton Athletic. So, yeah, never an easy thing to go through, um, especially obviously in, in the manner we did as well um, at Burnley, going to the last day and being outside, and then obviously being being put back in it was a uh, yeah, very difficult experience and and obviously um, kind of then was the end of my time at Burnley so I didn't really get to see the, the boys and that was kind of a, a team that had been together a long time that kind of you know all broke up if you like so yeah a bit of an, an end of an era and a, a new chapter for, for a lot of players you know and myself and and like you say to, to come to this club in this city um, you know when I heard about the interest 
uh, I was massively excited and kind of over the moon that you know that there was a chance of it happening and then when it happens you know like you say it's a kind of a 2.0 it's a kind of a reset you got to prove yourself again um, you want to prove yourself again I want to take you know myself to the next level um, and I think this is a great place to do that. And the biggest difference between Eddie and Sean many people just look at it and go Oh, they're completely different. Yeah. But I bet they're not, are they? Yeah, of course. I think um, both kind of have core beliefs and um, things that are kind of non-negotiable, if you like, and things that are, you know, are massively important in a, a team environment and very much, you know, team first. I think that's something that, you know, carries through. And, um, and then, of course, there are those differences like, like there probably would be with, you know, any manager. Um, so it's been... You know, a really nice change for myself, I think. Um, obviously, being at Burnley six years, yeah. it's been a really, you know, s stimulating, you know, few months for myself, ha having, you know, a new set of coaching staff and a new manager, and, and like I say, having to kind of prove yourself again. Just finally, as a 16-year-old, when you were kind of famously released and had to rethink what you might do with your life, do you sit here now at a club that's about to sign a £60 million player that's got intentions to win the Premier League with the World Cup a few months? Uh, away, I mean, it must feel pretty amazing. Yeah, I think you know, feet on the ground, um, yeah. reach for the stars. I suppose that's something that uh, has carried me well in my in my career and since I've been in the Premier League. Um, you know, when I first made my Premier League debut, I felt it was I wanted it to, you know, be a good challenge, kind of a stage to prove myself and to to enjoy. That's why you play football when you're a little boy to to get to that level and to play on the nice pitches in front of you know, the big crowds against the best teams. So, no, very much still kind of got that mindset for myself that's carrying me forward.